Now that you've seen that, you might be thinking, wow, that was too easy. That's all it takes to install and remove packages on Linux. I don't even have to go to the internet and find them. It just finds them for me. Yes, it's that simple. You might be also wondering, but where do these packages come from? How does Kali or any Linux for that matter know where to go and look for these packages? They look in something called repositories and repositories are storage locations from which your software packages can be retrieved and installed. So Kali, for example, or Debian or any Linux for that matter would have remote storage location. Once you issue the apt get command, your Linux box will go to that location, try and find the package, and if it does, it will download it and install it for you. However, sometimes you try to install a package and Kali cannot find it in the default repositories. So what do you do? First, let's have a look at what these repositories look like. They're usually under the etc slash apt. And these are the two URLs or the two locations where Kali would go and find the packages that I want to install. You could actually browse to these using your web browser. Let's say now I want to update my system. I can do that using the apt get update. Now that will take a while, so I'll just speed things up a bit. Now, if I want to do a full distribution upgrade, I can do the apt get upgrade. See all of that? These are all softwares or packages that would be upgraded if I continue with this command. Here's a post exploitation tip for you. After you compromise a Linux host, chances are that you might get non root access and you want to find a vulnerability that will give you root access. This usually involves finding and exploiting a vulnerable software. You might also come across situations where the Linux box you broke into is not connected to the internet. Let's say you're doing an ethical hacking engagement for, I don't know, a bank. They invite you to come in and plug into their internal network as an employee and see if you can hack anything on their internal network. You manage to get into a Linux box and you find out that it's not connected to the internet, but you still want to use it as a stepping stone to try and get to other systems. To do that, you need to install some packages on it, but it's not connected to the internet, it's offline. So what do you do in this case? For both situations, you could use the dpackage command. And this is useful in multiple situations. Sometimes software cannot be found in repositories. Nezus, for example, if you try to install it using the apt get command, you will not be able to find it. You'll find it, however, on the Nezus website, and you'll notice that it ends with a .deb, .deb extension, which means it's software built for Linux Debian. Unlike apt, however, we need to note that the package does not take care of dependencies for us. So if a package needs any dependencies, we'll have to take care of that ourselves. To get back to the scenarios that we discussed in our post exploitation tip, to find versions of installed applications and hope that you are going to find an old outdated vulnerable one, you can do that using the dpackage minus L command. To install a package, let's say I want to install Nessus, for example, after downloading it, I can do that using the dpackage minus I command. And to remove a package, you can do that using the dpackage minus R command. Now you might be wondering, but I just said that the Linux system was offline and how am I saying that I can install Nessus after downloading it? That's going to be for another chapter. In another chapter, we're going to be learning how to download stuff on our Kali machine and then how we can use our Kali machine as a server to upload stuff from our Kali to the victim machine. But for now, let's not worry too much about it. Let's just assume that you somehow managed to get the Nessus package on the victim machine and you can use the dpackage command to install and remove it. Now remember, these are all situations that happen in ethical hacking engagements. Having said that, in ethical hacking engagements, you want to make sure that you have the permission to install and remove software 
of your quote unquote victim machine. So here's your mission for this section. On your Kali machine, install FileZilla. On your Windows machine, activate FTP. If you don't know how to do that, we explain that in our Hacking for Beginners course. Go back and review that section on Hacking for Beginners. And using the instructions on those videos, activate FTP on your Windows machine. Then, from Kali, open FileZilla and connect to your FTP server on Windows. Try to upload and download some files. Then on your Kali machine, download and install Nessus. Once you're done, we can move on to the next section.